Good morning. Welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. As we're studying again uh, what you must do to overcome temptation and sin. We must uh, recognize uh, where the temptation is coming from and what's going on. And, and we need to understand where we're being attacked. Be ready for it as much as you can. So how do I, how can I be ready uh, for temptation? You know, because I don't know how I'm going to be tempted. You know, uh, there's all kind of ways. We talked about the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, how the world, the flesh, and the devil can attack me. So I don't know how I'm going to be attacked. So what I need to do then is I get, be ready by studying the Word of God. Remember, we talked about that a couple times there where I, I read the Word of God and I memorize it. You don't always have your Bible in your hands. You always have it. don't always have access to a Bible. But you memorize some verses that help you. You know, you know what you need. Maybe you suffer from, maybe you get down and get kind of discouraged sometimes. You have a problem with things don't go right, and so you start getting discouraged. So you need to have some scripture so you don't go down that path. Don't let the, the devil take you down that path. If you have a problem with addiction, uh, you need to understand the, the power of God to give you victory over addiction, and you need to claim those promises of God, how he's going to be with you. He's not going to leave you, and you can trust him to take care of you. So we're looking at this today. You need to stay alert, and guess who you need to watch out for? I watch out for the devil, don't you? <laughs> He's always on the prowl. He wants to, to destroy your testimony. He wants to cause you to stumble. So we're looking over at 1 Peter in chapter 5 and verses 8 and 9. And we'll see what he says here. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, he's the devil. He says, a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So I look and see what he's got to say. He says, be aware of the devil. He's, like we talked about, he's persistent. He's not going to give up. And what he does is, he, when he talks to me about being vigilant, be, uh, be awake, be alert, I'm going to be watchful. I'm not going to be asleep. I'm not going to be sitting there half asleep. I'm not going to be just going through life ignorant of what's going on around me. I'm going to be aware of what's going on around me. We talk about that, you know, just being safety in the world that we live in. Just be aware of your surroundings. And that's what we need to do as Christians. Be aware of what's going on around us. And the devil, he's going to be there. That He's our adversary as a roaring lion. And when I, I think about this, you, you watch those movies from uh, Africa and places like that, and you, you see the, there'll be uh, some animals, a group of animals there, zebras or whatever, and, and uh, the lion is out there and he's walking around and, and they're all, they're bunched up and they're backed up against one another, you know, and uh, and they'll have the, 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 the certain ones on the outside, the stronger ones and that, and they, they protect the, the cows and the calves and stuff like that. And, and so we see, so I, I picture the devil doing that with Christians. He's walking around, and, and what does the devil want to do? He's, he's wanting to attack. And the lion's wanting to attack. And so what he's looking for, he's looking for a weak spot. He's looking for somebody that's weak uh, so that he can go and get that one and, and ruin their testimony. And so, yeah, I just, we, need, we need to stand with one another then, don't we? I just got a little bit off the, the subject here, but uh, this is one of those areas that, uh, as Christians, we need to be there for one another. You know, when, when, a, when a brother or a sister stumbles, the temptation gets overcomes them maybe, and they stumble a little bit, uh, we need to be there to pick them up. Not to kick them out so the devil can really tear them up. We need to pick them up and to encourage them, and to, to, to lift them up and to help them. And sometimes people don't want help in that position, but we need to be trying to protect them and uh, keep them and take care of them when the devil can't get hold of them. So we need to be alert. We need to watch. Uh, we never know where he's going to come from. He's walking about and he's seeking who he may devour. It's your testimony he wants. He knows once you're saved, you're saved. You're a child of God. You're born into the family of God. He can't get you out of the family of God. The Bible tells us over in John chapter 10, we're in God's hands, but nothing can get us out of His hands. Or in Romans 8, nothing can separate us from the love of God that's ours through Christ Jesus. So He knows He can't get your salvation. He can't have your soul, but He can sure tear up your testimony. And so I need to be awake. I need to be alert and be sure that I realize that, that he is, He's my greatest enemy. He's the one that's trying to destroy me. And so I need to be ready for that so that when the time comes, I'm ready to stand against him and resist him. My page stuck here. I want to turn pages here. So I'm going to recognize my adversary. I'm going to recognize my enemy. I'm going to recognize what he wants to do. And so what am I going to do as a result of that? Okay. He's trying to destroy me. So I'm going to resist steadfast. That means I'm unmovable. I'm not going to be wavering. I'm not going to be doubting. I'm going to be steadfast in the faith. Okay, what's he talked about there then? He's, we're looking at that. He says here, uh, I believe God's word. 
Okay, when we talk about faith, when we talk about saving faith, when you come to know Christ as your Savior, if you're watching this and you're born again, you're born into the family of God, there was a point in time when you understood that you was a sinner and you called upon the name of the Lord to save you. You put your faith in your trust, your faith, your belief that that shed blood was shed for your sins and by believing that, you have eternal life. I'm not talking about head knowledge, I'm talking about in your heart. And that's why I want to be sure I emphasize that, that, that it's not head knowledge, even when it comes time to, to living your word, living the Bible. It's, it's not a head thing. We memorize it up here, yes, but we bring it down to our heart. It has to be a part of us where we apply it. So it's applicable. When I'm chased, when I'm faced with these, these different temptations, I'm prepared for that because I know the Word of God. I have the Word of God memorized, and I know where I want to go with it. And so as we look at this, the devil, he wants to come after us. So I'm going to stay steadfast in the faith in God's Word. I believed Him for my salvation. So now my salvation is secured. So now I go from salvation to sanctification. I have to live out this life as a Christian. And that's what we'll stand before the Bema Seat someday. The, the life that from the day of our salvation until our death of the rapture, that's where we'll stand in front of the Bema Seat. And we'll be judged on those things we did or didn't do. Not sin, but how we responded to the things that God gave us, how we respond to the life we had through Christ. And so when we look at that, I'm going to be steadfast. I'm going to believe God's Word. And I, I can't emphasize that much. That it's so important that you believe you have faith in God's Word. God is faithful. He's not going to change. He's not going to turn His back on you. He loves you. God will chasten you sometimes if you're not doing what you should be doing. But He always wants to bring you back. He always wants you to draw back. Wants to draw you back to Him. And so He says here, resist steadfast in the faith. And guess what? You're not the only one going through this. Would you believe that? You're not the only one that's going through trouble in life. You're not the only one that's suffering depression. You're suffering addiction, suffering from hurt, from pain, from disease. Because he goes ahead and finishes that, that sentence out, knowing that the same afflictions, the same testing, the same problems accomplish, are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So uh, those people out there in the world, they're going through the same thing you and I are going through. When we get saved, God does not promise you a cakewalk. When you get saved, God does not say, okay, all your cares, all your worries are over. You know, there's going to be nothing but smooth sailing from here on from to, for the rest of this life and then on into glory. A good example, look around you in the world around us. Look at those people over in Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan we've been reading so much about. There's Christians over there and uh, they've been saved and they're living in a hostile environment in Afghanistan. And God, is he sometimes he protects them, sometimes he martyrs and lets them to be martyred. You say, why, why are you doing that, God? Why don't you take your children and put a hedge about them to, to demonstrate your, your power that once a person's a Christian, uh, they, they're safe from all the things of the world. Well, God wants us to bring glory to Him. God wants us to honor Him, so He allows some to be martyred, some to be taken, some to be lifted up, some to be saved, some to be, some to be saved as far as physically speaking. We don't know why He does what He does. We don't know why He allows uh, this man to die, or this woman to die, or this uh, young boy or young girl to be kidnapped, or we don't understand that. But God is in control. And so when He, as He moves, we want to be sure that we remain faithful. And that's what He says right here, resist steadfast in the faith. Distrust God. That's how simple it is. Distrust God. The devil wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your testimony. But He can, cannot destroy your soul. He cannot have you. And so we're going to trust God. We're going to believe in Him. Believe him. When he promises something in his word, we're going to believe it and we're going to take it to the bank, as they say. So we'll stop there. We're going to go uh, a little bit further tomorrow. we we'll finish up a little bit more on this one as we look at uh, John chapter 8. But the idea is that we do. We need to know the word of God, know who we are, and, and have a desire. Listen, we want to have a desire to overcome temptation to resist the devil. We want to have that desire. There's things in your life. Sin is fun for a season. And sometimes people get caught up. They start thinking about how life was before they got saved. And what they think, oh, I'm missing this, I'm missing that. And our friends and other folks don't always help in those situations. But we have to have the desire to live the kind of life that will bless and glorify God. So the only way you can do that is to know Christ as your Savior. You must know Jesus as your personal Savior. Have that personal relationship with Him. And then you can bring glory to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day and for this time. We just pray you be with each one of us as we face these trials, these testings in life. Lord, we pray we would stand firm, stand be steadfast in our faith and our trust in you, knowing you love us and you're going to strengthen us and you're going to get us through it. 
we can believe you and we can trust you. We just pray for those that don't know Christ, we pray this would be the day. This would be the hour they come to know Jesus as their personal Savior. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you've done, Lord. And as we look to the days ahead for what you're going to do, for I pray in Jesus' name, amen.